Hey, River Church, this is Todd uh, bringing you a message from our home. Uh, this is a tough one, and I know it's tough for everybody because we're all thinking about what in the world just happened in our country. I mean, we've, we're surviving a pandemic, and now we're hit uh, square uh, between the eyes with the reality that racism is deep in our country. And uh, how do we even address it? How are we supposed to even feel about this? What are we supposed to do? What is the response, I think, of the church, of seeing the footage of a man, George Floyd, lose his life because of mistreatment, because of hatred, because of racism that goes so deep in our country? Um, I don't even understand it. I can't even possibly understand the feeling, the feelings that someone would have if if uh, a person living in this country of color that doesn't have the privilege that other people do. It's not right, it's not just. And we know if Jesus walked in the door today of our churches, what would he do? What would he do? I know what he would do. He's already told us that. He would reach down and he would care for the oppressed. We know that, Zechariah chapter seven, verse 10, says that we are to care for the widow and the orphan. James says the same, very same thing in James chapter one, that this is pure and undefiled religion, to care for widows and orphans in their distress, to care for people that are oppressed. In fact, Jesus said, you'll know when I come back. I'm gonna come back and there's gonna be a lot of birth pangs, chaos, hardship, difficulties, kingdoms fighting against kingdoms, clashes, wars. We don't know whether Jesus is ready to come back, but I know that these kinds of things that we've been experiencing recently are the kinds of things that Jesus talks about preparing for his return. And what does Jesus want to do before he returns? We aren't to try to figure out when Jesus is coming back. We're to be faithful. That's what Jesus said. In Matthew 25, he said, the people that will be with me in king, my kingdom, in the paradise that I build, will be those who care for those that are oppressed. And so the question is, what do we do? I mean, what does the church do? Of course, we're to pray. No question we're to pray. We're to pray for healing. I think we're to confess. There's no question um, that over and over again we find in the scriptures, Nehemiah, uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, every single one of these great leaders confess the sins of the people they were leading. They confess the sins of the country. And we need, to, we need to confess before God what a mess we have made that has led to this level of racism and inequality that people of color experience in this country. It needs to stop, but how does it stop? Well, I think we also need to listen. We really need to listen. We need to have an ear to listen to people tell their story. I was listening to uh, one particular um, individual that is controlling one of the National Guards in one of our major cities here, 140 cities under, you know, in protest and all sorts of things happening. But in one particular case, a National Guardsman sat and listened, sat and listened to the story of a person who feels the oppression every day. It's what we need to do. We need to listen. We need to stop and listen. And then I think another thing we need to do is we need to seriously consider how we are going to act. You know, if we just simply pray and confess and listen, that's great. But I think there's time for action. There's time for something for us to do. Whether you want to stand in peaceful protest, I think that's awesome. Go for it. I think standing alongside people that share that view that we need to see a stop to this kind of ill treatment of people of color in this country. But maybe it means we need to figure out ways in which to reach into our inner cities, reach into other communities that may be not like ours, where you see a lot of injustice, you see a lot of inequality, you see a lot of difficulty and hardship, reaching into maybe some organizations and figuring out how can we help? How can we come alongside? What can we, it's messy. I know it's gonna be messy. It's gonna be time consuming. It's gonna be sacrificial. But I think that's what Jesus would want us to do. He'd want us to say, maybe it's time to stop with all the other stuff and to get involved. And so I'm calling on the River Church to do 
all of these things that maybe I recommended and encourage us to be considering in the next few days, what is it that we can do as we stand along brothers and sisters of various colors in this country and stand in solidarity and pray for healing in this country. Thanks for listening.